if you want it's Emily Fox. Today's video is gonna be me wrapping up slash looking back at my year through the reading challenge I was doing for this year was to try and read big books. Books that were over 500 pages. It's kind of what I consider big. And I don't know about you, but I'm terrified of them. It's absolutely silly because we all know that if we enjoy a world, we're gonna be happy that the book is long. But for some reason, they intimidate me. And plus, some of these were like classics and like things that are so hyped up that I'm scared I'm not gonna like them as much as everyone else and it's just discouraging. So uh, that, that was why I was doing this challenge. I had written, I believe, 16 different titles and put them all in my cute little cat jar and I would pick one every month or just pick one from my pile and it would be the book I was reading that month. My ultimate goal was to read 10, but I was picking one every month. So I let myself, you know, a little bit of leeway. Uh, I did end up reading eight. With that said, uh, I believe throughout the whole year I ended up reading 20 that were over 500 pages. So I didn't just uh, stick to these books. I did end up reading more actually than last year. So there's an improvement. Uh, with that said, I think there's a few things I will change if I redo this challenge. Spoiler alert. <laughs> so basically I thought I would take the opportunity to uh, look back at this challenge, tell you more about those books because I feel like some of them I want to share more thoughts. Some of them did make it to my best of the year so I won't go into too much details and just kind of share what I learned and what I would uh, fix next time. In January, I read Is Dark Materials Trilogy by Philip Pullman. So basically the first book is Northern Lights. I feel like everyone kind of knows the movie, which wasn't that great, but uh, the book is amazing. It was my first time rereading it. I read it like years ago when I was like 10 and it came out and I loved it. Uh, but I've never read it and I didn't know if uh, it would still stand as an adult. I believe this is considered middle grade Why it did. Uh, this actually did end up in my best of 2018, but I didn't say a lot about it, so I thought I would do it today. This book has over a thousand pages because, again, it's three books in one, right? 1100 pages. And I have to say, I think it was a good thing that all three books were in one edition, which by the way, I got on Book Depository because I always get questions. It looks a little bit like a dictionary, but it's very pretty. Uh, but yeah, I think that even though they're kind of scary, combined edition like this make it so much easier to continue reading because I feel like if I had had the three books, I would have probably put the first one down and not read book two, at least not right away. That way I was able to read all three books in the same month and it was fairly easy. Love this world. It's the, like I was saying, middle grade YA fantasy world where uh, people have a demon, which is kind of an animal that they have to stay close to. They're like part of their soul. And it becomes more and more serious as you go through it, more and more uh, kind of against religion. Let's, let's just say it. There's so many very touching characters and I found that it was actually quite suspenseful for a book that targets children. But again, adults will definitely enjoy this too. And so much happens. I loved it, absolutely recommend it. Pick it up if you've never done it. Pick it up if you've read it as a kid, still worth it. So I started the year with like a big book for real and then I picked up from the jar, so I didn't pick it up myself, this book, which is uh, volume one of the Raria Revelations, basically Tap of Swords by Michael J. Sullivan. This is a true classic uh, fantasy with swords, horses, uh, mysterious creatures that have to be slayed. You get it. This is also a combined edition. There's the first book and the second book. And I have to say there's a huge improvement between book one and book two, like huge. The world gets so much bigger. Things get less cringy. Uh, this I had given five stars and this I believe I gave 3.5. My issues with this one were, um, I did cringe a little bit. There's a scene in the beginning. I should have put a post-it, but basically like these two guys are like, thieves and they're like very good friends. They're always like, you know, joking around and they're like walking around th that road and there's Steve trying to like kill them and steal their stuff. And it's so edgy because with just the words, they scare them away. Like <laughs> it's a bit too much for me. Not really my type of humor, but I understand why other people would enjoy it. Uh, I do think, I believe this is targeted, like categorized adult book. I would say why, like a hundred percent why. And I did have issues with, um, Half the female characters were prostitutes, which again, nothing again prostitutes, but it's just, why is it so common in fantasy written by men? I've never understood. Uh, but again, it's something that did also improve in book two. I am still open to continuing the series. It's just that I guess I wasn't really the targeted 
reader for this type of book. I feel like this would be probably more like young adult, probably men. Uh, but yeah, it's a classic fantasy. I understand why people liked it. Not my favorite, didn't make it to my best for sure, but not my worst either. I'm gonna be talking about these two books at the same time because they get compared all the time. <laughs> so uh, The Stand by Stephen King, which I read in October, and then there's uh, Swan Song by Robert McCammon, which is the book that I read, I believe, in March. So again, I was still doing good with big books. I didn't tell you actually how many pages. 650, so still pretty big book, but it's a floppy one. Love those ones. Okay, so McCammon has like 900 pages and this town is like way over a thousand, so they're both big boys. Um, so there's a bunch of people comparing them all the time, telling you which one is the best between the two. They're both post-apocalyptic books, which is one of my favorite genre. Uh, this one is a nuclear war and this one is a disease, which is my favorite type. So let's start with this one. Uh, I feel like this one, I went into it not knowing that there would be some fantasy elements, which kind of brought the story down a little bit for me. I feel like I would have enjoyed it more if I had known. With that said, uh, I found that the beginning was super complicated because you start following, I believe, like something like six different people. And one of the characters is like a homeless, kind of crazy woman. <laughs> so you start and you're like, what am I reading? But uh, you, you get into it eventually and it gets better and better. I did uh, enjoy kind of the mysterious, funny part at the end. And it was overall a pretty good read. It's very dark. Post-apocalyptic books tend to be uh, because, I mean, war between different group of people. Some people are definitely evil. There's definitely like a fight between evil and good in here. And it was overall a very enjoyable book. Is it my favorite post-apocalyptic I've ever read? I don't think so. Uh, that's just, I mean, we're all gonna feel differently about these things, but it was still a pretty solid read. I will definitely include this uh, in a video when I do about all the post-apocalyptic books that I've read that are enjoyable. And then if I compare it to The Stand by Stephen King, this one, see, I said that the beginning was more complicated in this one and then it gets better. I feel like this one was kind of the opposite. Like, I feel like the first part was my favorite part. Uh, like I said, this one is a disease. The beginning is like epic. Like, I thought I was going to give this five star because it was like mind blowing. I love how uh, he was explaining how the disease just like spread. It was fascinating. Um, with that said, I feel like the second part is definitely more uh, character driven and absolutely just becomes about a fight between good and evil. I actually listened to a lot of it as an audiobook, which usually it can make you less attached to characters, at least in the, some books, uh, but it was still very attached to the characters. It was still easy, even though there's so many people uh, to follow who was who, who was doing what and everything. A lot of complaints that I've heard from this book is that one, you will get sick. <laughs> you will get sick when you read this book. It's like how it happens. I was traveling when I was reading this. So like every time I would hear people cough, I would be like, that's it, I'm about to die. And I got sick twice, twice. I rarely get sick, but like, uh, yeah, yeah, it does it. <laughs> but uh, usually the main complaint I hear about this is the ending, which I thought was really quick. I feel like, um, Stephen King and his ending, you know, it's always all over the place, but I, it wasn't the worst that I've read from him at all. Uh, I was still okay with it overall, but it was really quick and I was just like, oh, th th that's it, but okay. Uh, so yeah, overall between the two, if I have to choose a favorite, I think I'm gonna go with The Stand. But again, I prefer the second part of this one and I prefer the first part of this one. So I generally just tell you they're both worth the read if that's something you're into. And I have to say, listening to this one as an audiobook was definitely a good thing for me. If you can't follow like multiple characters and it gets too complicated, not the best one, but I find it for really, really big books, it can be uh, kinda enjoyable slash less intimidated. Children of Time by Adrian Tchaikovsky. I love. This made it to my best of 2018. <sighs> I've talked about it a lot, but this is hard sci-fi. Uh, kind of a battle between humans and super spiders that become more and more intelligent. This is just great. <laughs> uh, I can't rave about this enough. The ending, so good. And this one had uh, almost 600 pages. Yeah, like just under. And it flew by. I can't remember which one I read before. I think this was the one I read in July. This was Le Comte de Monte Cristo by Alexandre Dumas. Uh, you, you might notice there's a one there. Yep, I had an addition in two part. Mistake. You know how I told you this one made it easy to read the whole thing. <laughs> uh, I, this is one of the things I learned. Having two books for like one book makes me not want to continue. Like I felt like, oh, I did it. I can move on. 
No, I just read half. Uh, it is over 700 pages, so it still counts as a big book that I've read, but I have yet to continue and it's, yeah. I was scared with this one because it's written in French. I, I got the French edition, which is my first language, so really I have no excuse, but I haven't read a French book and especially a classic in super long, but the writing was super easy. If you speak French, don't be scared at all. And I liked how the author was like kind of sassy at times, uh, but yeah. I think my issue with this one is that the first half was so epic and it kind of slowed down and it makes sense because authors very often at the time were uh, paid per word so they kind of stretched the stories a lot um, but I, I'm sure everything will pick up and get very epic again at the end so yeah I need to continue maybe I should put this on my list next year or something but this was good again no more two in one or one in two <laughs> Speaking of classic, one that I did finish, uh, Emma by Jane Austen. This made it to my most surprising books of the year. I absolutely recommend it. My edition, I think it's kind of stretched out because it has almost 600 pages and I don't think the book is that big. Uh, classic is definitely slower pace. I did struggle to finish this in time. I can't remember, I believe I read this in August. Uh, uh, if you don't want to read the book, I would at least watch the BBC uh, TV show and super attaching characters. But I understand why I've been avoiding reading classics because they're so much slower pace. I feel like I can't finish them in time when I give myself that goal uh, during that uh, month. Cause like, it doesn't matter ultimately to like read X amount of books per month, that's fine. But I feel like when I put myself a goal of reading a book like I was doing with this challenge, I felt like I couldn't balance the challenge and uh, just my usual reading, just the ones I wanted to read right now. I felt kind of forced to read that one, so it made me not want to read. So that's definitely something I would have to change if I were to redo it. <laughs> I'm being so subtle with my hints. Uh, but yeah, overall I enjoyed it, definitely recommend it, at least the BBC show, but... BBC <laughs> show, but the book was great too. The writing was really nice, like, made me realize I missed it. So things kind of went downhill. Afterwards, I started some books, didn't finish them. I was pushing back some, reading half of them. <laughs> and it just, I was slowing down. I was starting to stress about the books I wanted to read absolutely this year and I wasn't able to because of the challenge. So I would have to change some categories, which I did end up cheating a little bit, although it's my own challenge. So does it count as cheating? I don't know. I, I didn't mention to you that I was switching this Scary, scary book, which, I mean, when you can kill someone with a book, like, you're allowed to be scared. This one is over 1400 pages, and uh, it's by N.K. Jemisin, and it's a fantasy series, and I was scared that I wasn't going to love this, and I would be scared to read her other books. Other books? <laughs> I put H's where they don't need to be, and then I didn't pronounce them when I need to. Uh, and I had this trilogy on my shelf, which I was dying to read, so I decided to do a little switcheroo, which, again... I mean, switching one book for three books kind of is the same, plus they're all 400 pages, so it's not like I was switching them for very, very short books. You can see I'm currently in book three. Uh, as I'm posting this, it's probably going to be finished. I'm kind of pre-filming a little bit for the holidays. Uh, I'm about like 200 pages into it, so not too bad. Uh, so far, I am enjoying this series so much. Again, the first book made it to my best of the year. In this case, I'm happy I actually did the switch because I was scared that I wouldn't finish this one or I wouldn't end up loving it and be stuck with the series which is like newer and possibly better on my shelf so I'm very happy I did that. So like I said, did it, made it to my best of the year. Kind of sci-fi fantasy, super original. The writing will not be for everyone, it's definitely slower paced and more complicated than the average fantasy book but I'm happy with it. I'm very curious to see how it's gonna end. I'll keep you updated in the comment section if you're interested but yeah, I cheated but everything kinda is okay. <laughs> so are those all of them? Oh, do it walk at like this set bit. Eight. Boom. Did it. Uh, so yeah, other than that, I know I started uh, Pandora Star and didn't finish it because I'm a little wuss. Uh, it just happened. Like sometimes I started a book, read a hundred pages, put it down and forgot about it for the rest of the year. I have like literally a pile of shame behind <laughs> this chair. There's no real shame, but like I don't know why I keep doing that. Like I don't even dislike the book. I just put it down and I'm like, oh yeah, I'll come back to it. So the best ones that I read this year were Is Dark Materials, Children of Time, and probably these two as special mentions. I did really like Monte Cristo, but I feel like I can't really say that because I only read half, right? <laughs> um, my least favorite 
again, it wasn't horrible. And I'm kind of shocked that actually all the big books that I chose, none of them ended up being like horrible books. And like maybe all the big books are actually good or maybe I just am more careful with big books that I read than like smaller ones. So I know it's gonna come as a shock, but I am planning, are you ready for this? To redo the challenge next year. <laughs> So I am going to be doing a different video, but basically I am redoing this reading challenge because I am not done with my fear of big books. So 2019 I will be choosing 12 books and read them and actually I will probably uh, make you vote for some of them. So definitely watch that video because I need some help with some of them. That way we're going to be able to read big books together. So actually let me know if you have read any of these in support. Uh, what you thought about them, I would really uh, like to have a discussion about them because again, I don't feel like I've heard that many people talk about these on booktube and it would be really interesting to see what you thought of them. So what about you? Are you scared of big books too? Are you like a professional big book reader? Because I know some of you only read big books and I'm like, you good. Let me know actually if you are planning on doing any reading challenges because I'm kind of curious now. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it, even though, you know, we didn't fully succeed. Eight out of like the original goal of 10 is like 80%. Like I passed easily that challenge. <laughs> Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. I will be putting on the screen the videos that I've done including my best and worst books that I've read this year and I will be seeing future videos. Bye!